Lord God. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and say amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Someone shout out Jesus one more time. Jesus, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for coming out. We love you. We want to call up Freddie for the announcements. Brother Freddie. Who feels the powerful presence of the Lord today in this place? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Okay, our first announcement is if everyone could put, please put your phones on silent or vibrate, please. And our second announcement is, let's get ready for our 2023 conference. It's going to be a real exciting, awesome time. You're going to be getting fed by a lot of awesome pastors, I believe, from all around the world. So everyone wants to make it out. And let's get our pledges in before the 15th of this month. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Um, God's going to work through it. Um, the whole conference and you're going to reach a lot of people and touch people. It's going to be a real powerful time. And the dates for that are going to be on January 30, 31st to February 2nd. And our third announcement is let's keep on inviting to our people to our Sunday service. You know, if you got to bribe them, tell them you take them, buy them a double cheeseburger. Or just if you don't have enough money, just a regular cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> and just whatever we have to do to keep on trying to bring people closer to the Lord. Is, that's probably the most powerful thing we could do in this life is just keep on building the kingdom of God. It's, it's, what, we're, it's what we're here for. And I believe there's going to be fellowship after service in the back. There will be coffee. So... Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to call Brother Anthony. Thank you, Freddie. Powerful announcement, Freddie. Thank you, Freddie. Amen. Now we're about to get to the God. Our, we're about to give back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, church. Holy Spirit got me twisted. Amen. All right, we like to call our ushers up before we get started. Amen. All right. Amen. So we have three ways to get today, church. We have the Wazell app. And for those of you online, you see the number is 909-303-0291. And if you'd like to write a check out today to Living Word Upland, you may. And we have through our tithing envelopes. This is a show of hands. If anybody needs a tithing envelope. Amen. And um, I would just like to touch bases on the pledge. Um, right now, we have to the 15th to raise 2000 I believe, right? To the 15th again. Um, and we're at 1400 1400 So if anybody out there, you know, we're, we're kingdom builders, like my brother Freddie said. You know, we're kingdom builders, and this is going to... Uh, our conference where souls will be saved, amen, amen, or we can get revival. That's what I'm waiting for, amen, amen. I need that spiritual cleansing right now, amen, amen. Well, um, to our givers, we love you, we thank you to our faithful givers. Um, we're about to get into our scripture right here. Right here for Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're already blessed, church. Amen? He says uh, we will be overflowed with blessings. Amen? But we're already blessed. Amen? We, I know most of us in here, we have a car. We have a house. We have food in our bellies. Amen? And that, that's good enough right there. We're, we're beyond blessed. And sometimes we could take that for granted. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling everybody to raise their hands because all of us do it. We take it for granted. I, I'm the first to say it. We do. And, man, I was reading Genesis yesterday. And it said, on the beginning, the beginning, when God created the, uh, the earth and the heavens and all that, he said it was good. He created the oceans. It was good. He created the land. It was good. 
And when he created man in his image, he said he was blessed. So we've been, been, we've been blessed since the beginning. Amen. Amen. God is so good to us. And, and sometimes we don't, we don't realize how good he is. You know, everything that we give back to him, he, it, was, it all came from him. Amen. So let's bless the Lord today, church. Amen. Amen. If we could all stand, just show a little reverence right now. Dear Heavenly Father, my God, we thank you for another day, Lord. My God, right now I pray for a cleansing right now, my Lord. My God, I pray for revival in our giving, Lord. My God, in Jesus' name, I rebuke any grudging spirit, my God, anything that keeps us from giving to you, my God. My Lord, I pray for spiritual vision, my God, to understand that we are blessed, my God. My God, we have so much, my God. We have so much, my God. If we had nothing, just had you, we would still be blessed, my God. So we thank you, my God. To all our givers, my God, I pray for double portion of blessings, my God, in their lives, my God. And for the ones you don't give, my God, I pray for blessing in their lives as well, my God. To give double portions to you, my God. We love you, my God. We praise you. We lift your name up in this house of worship, my God. In Jesus' my name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give it up for Jesus this evening, amen. Oh, come on, how many can get excited, amen? For uh, some reason, uh, we're going to go ahead and dismiss our ushers right now. And we're also going to dismiss our children, amen? But how many are ready for the word this evening, amen? Uh, just a couple of you, hallelujah, I don't know about you. But I I'd be ready, but um, right now... Just a, a reminder that we're talking about our pledges. We have a, a, a sign-up sheet there. If you want to pledge for the conference, you know, we encourage the church. Write down the number. It don't have to be here till the 15th. Tell your neighbor you got 15 days. Well, pretty close to 15 days. Just to try to get it in by then. I know it's on the 30th, maybe some, but it, whatever it is, 25, 50, uh, we've raised 1400 already, amen, and that's good, but we're, our pledge is, tell your neighbor, is 2000 so, you know, we got, and remember this, okay, our pledge are not our tithes, because, you know, a lot of us like to do that, oh, yeah, watch, let me put in there, remember, everything's recorded, so, you know, keep your tithes with your tithes, if you want to pledge, and you really want to get blessed, you know, put in there, you know, it's, it's something that's going to benefit you, amen, Tell your neighbor, it's going to benefit me. How many want a fresh start this evening? Amen. How many want a fresh start this year? Then I suggest you start writing your name over there. Amen. But God was going to bless it. Amen. And he's going to give it to you a hundredfold. And that's what God says. You know what? I want to bless you so you can be a blessing as well. Amen. Tell your neighbor, he's talking to me tonight. But we're going to go ahead and jump in our word and... We, are, we started talking about getting a fresh start back in our lives, amen? But how many of us know we prepare for a fresh start as well? And we can't bring a fresh start with our old stuff still hanging on. Tell your neighbor, I got on by, amen? In order for us to have a fresh start, that means we got to get rid of the old stuff, amen? A lot of us like to carry old stuff into the new year, right? Well, I'm going to tell you and hate to bust your bubble that if you want a fresh start, you got to get rid of the old. But right now, we're going to go ahead and jump in our scripture on Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. And this is Paul writing the Philippi church. But the word of God reads like this. Not that I already obtain all this and have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold for that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it again. 
But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is I hid. I press on towards the goal to win the prize to which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight, Father God, for your presence, Father God, in this house. We pray, Father God, that you continue to move by your spirit, Father God. Let us open up our hearts tonight, Lord. But through it all, Lord Jesus, let us continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. Amen. And, amen. and we may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're going to do a standing sermon today. You know, for those that are here today, um, you know, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you're not going to find it. For some reason, we don't have live on Living Word of Upland right now. So it's under Amando and Anna. So thank God that you're here tonight. Amen. For the other ones, they're going to have to wait or buy the CD. Not that we make some, but we still got to wait for it. Amen. But, you know, we're talking about a fresh start, okay? And I don't know about you, I, I need to get a, get a fresh start, amen? And, and what does a fresh start mean? Well, let's go a little bit in Ephesians. Because in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 through 16, and this is Paul again writing the Ephesus church, and he's writing them like this. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, awake, O sleepers, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And then right here in verse 15, it says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Verse 16 says, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. And I believe right now. You know, talking about a fresh start, it means that it's a new beginning, amen? Maybe 2022 was all messed up for you, but still we're talking in the times that the times are evil. Meaning that God is trying to give us another chance to get it right, amen? Let your neighbor know that time's running out. The time is not like before where we're probably trying to make a decision. Basically, this 2023 should be the year that I said, I'm going to get in it to win it. Amen? Amen. But if you're looking for a fresh start first, you have to wake up. How many are still asleep tonight? Don't worry, we got coffee in the back. Keep coffee to keep everybody awake now. But what Paul is talking about waking up, he's talking about waking up spiritually. Because I believe that many of us are still asleep spiritually. And, and what happens is we're trying to come in a new year for the new things that God has for our lives. But we're not going to see it because we're all still not looking spiritually. Tell your neighbor, I want the new stuff that God has for me. In other words, first you have to wake up, but many of us are still sleeping. You see, a fresh start, what is, again, a complete change in your way of life. It's the way you do things. Meaning that now I want to have a fresh start, okay? I got a brand new year coming ahead, amen? Like I said, last year I might have made a lot of Dumb choices, but this year I want to get it right. I want to get it right for my family. I want to get it right for my loved ones. Amen. I want to get it right for myself because I'm tired of walking in a circle, not getting nowhere. Sound familiar sometimes? Or is it just the pastor? It's probably just me. Amen. I used to walk like a circle. Here, here we go again. But we need to wake up for the newness that God has. Again, who wants a fresh start? Tell your neighbor, get rid of the old then. I want the newness that God has for me. But in order for me to receive the new stuff that God has for me, I got to let go of the old. Look at your neighbor and say, sorry, neighbor. But I'm going to be with the newness, amen. 
You see, for the newness to take place, it means that we got a fresh beginning for this new year. That means when we have a fresh beginning, then we're going to have a new direction. A new direction will give us that fresh start again. In other words, we have to let go of 22. I mean, 2022. Hallelujah. And prepare yourselves for 2023. If you don't start preparing yourselves now, you're going to miss it another year. Who wants to miss it another year? How many are tired of, of like not sometimes seeing the spiritual blessing that really is supposed to take place within our lives, but we keep missing it even year after year? We don't see it. And what happens when we don't see things? Again, we talk about the carnal. You see, the carnal mind wants to see things. They want to see signs and wonders, amen? amen? But when you walk in the spiritual realm, it's a lot different because you're not going to really see signs and wonders. You're just going to have to believe by faith, trust God in what's going to be that he's in control. He's large and in charge, and he will get you through your situation that you might be in. I don't know, but I'll give a clap offering for the Lord. You see, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, is anyone in Christ, the new creation has come, and the old has gone. In other words, again, the new is here. So if we are a new creation in Christ Jesus, that means we got to let go. What are we talking about letting go? Don't all raise your hands at one time. But we have to get rid of the old mindset. You know, sometimes we even come to church and we say, oh, pastor is always preaching about the same things. Well, how many of us know that if you think the preaching is boring, maybe you're boring? Hello, somebody. Tell your neighbor, you're boring. It's not the preaching that's boring because that's the word that's coming up straight from heaven. Amen. And in the, if you're boring, if you think the preaching is boring, you're the one that's boring. It's the word of God that I'm ministering. Amen. And it shouldn't be boring. Amen. Tell, I, I got to change my mindset now. But we had to get rid of the old mindset. Amen. Maybe last year I thought everything was boring. Well, I'll change it this year. You be happy this year, amen? And say, it's not boring, amen? I'm happy, hallelujah. Amen? I don't know about you, but hey, I get fed out of my own, the own words that God feeds me, amen? I'm like, hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we just had a, 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 a triple or quadruple shotgun at the men and the women's home. Men's home are always there. And they, I believe they loved it, right? We're, I mean, because you get chopped up there, amen. It's like, híjole, you're, I, I'm even like, my chair like, ay, ay, ay. But it got to all the ones that come from the homes and shoom, 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 chop, chop, chop. Because that's what the word of God should do to us. But there was the one that I had the letter doll, amen. How many of us know that we can come to church and out of a sudden become very dull? And the first thing it is, is dull of hearing. But we want to move in into what God has for us this new year. But we get, we can't, I can't hear. I didn't hear that. Or I, I was even talking that I said I should have even threw this one on. You know how we always say, hey, I'm pastor. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. But at least I'm in the shed. I said, don't let me get in there because I'm going to throw you away. Why do I want a dull tool? Right? If I'm going to be dull, why am I going to want to be in the shed? I'm trying to get rid of this. God wants to use you tonight. 
You, you want a fresh start? Who wants a fresh start again? Get ready to get used. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So we had to let go of 2022 and start preparing ourselves for 2023 for the new things that God has for you. So I believe that we need to get sharpened up. Amen. 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 So when we talk about getting rid of the old mindset. How many of us know 2022 was probably a hard year? Believe me, if we went through it. I'm pretty sure a lot of you went through it. Amen. But are we still here? Give a clap offering to the Lord. Amen. Tonight. Amen. 22 couldn't keep us down. So 2023, I'm going to go ahead and receive my blessings. Amen. But when we talk about getting rid of the old mindset, what are we getting rid of? Maybe the failures. So I believe maybe many of us failed. Maybe we failed in 2022, whatever was going on. Like I said, you're here today. Maybe you got hurt in 2022, amen. Maybe there was disappointments that you're not where you want to be. Or maybe even, like I said again, making dumb decisions. Nobody here ever made a dumb decision? Hallelujah. Well, today I'm going to tell you, you make the right decision. You're here at church, amen. Oh, come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Or maybe even sin that's just been stuck on us. But we have to understand that we got to learn to confess it, forget it, and move on. Amen. How many want the new here? All right, I'm getting at the right church. Amen. And how many are still stuck? Okay, none of you, right? Better see you all at the conference. I'm just kidding. Everybody's saying, ah, pastor, that's not right. (laughs) But in reality, how many are still stuck in the old? You see, many times we find ourselves stuck in the same trench, that pit, whatever we are stuck in. Could be even be sin. You see in Psalms 40 verse 2 said. He lifted me out of the sliming pit. Out of the mud. Out of the mire. And he set my feet on the rock. And gave me a first firm place to stand. But a lot of us like to go back in that pit. And I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the church down the street, all right? You see, we go over the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over 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 again. But to get a fresh start, tell your neighbor, who wants a fresh start? We got to get unstuck. How many are ready to get unstuck? Amen. I'm ready to get unstuck. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready to get unstuck. But tell your neighbor, wait, what is stuck? You see, when you're stuck, you're unable to move from a particular position or a place or unable to change the situation. You know, I believe that many of us get stuck sometimes, even in ministry. We can't move from the same place where we're at. How many of us know that we serve a moving God? Amen. He's not going to keep you in your same place. He's not going to keep you in your same situation. Whatever you've been stuck on, amen, it's time to let it go, amen. Start trusting God. Let's start getting into prayer and start believing for what God has for you this year. I don't know, 2022 might have been all bad, but 2023, we're going to come like a vast army with a vengeance to take everything That the enemy has taken from us. How many are with me tonight? Amen. Oh, just a few of you. Hallelujah. At least I know some are coming. But you see, 
When you're stuck, you're unable to move from a particular position. Some of us, we get caught up in our sin. And we expect God to move in our life. How many of us know that God has given us an opportunity to get out of that sin or whatever we're stuck in? Amen. He has given us an opportunity to get out of it. But tell your neighbor, we got to make the choice. Everybody's looking at their neighbor. Hey, did you tell pastor on me? No, the Holy Ghost did, okay? You see, I believe that many of us get stuck in our situation as well. You know, maybe we did have a bad year 2022. Maybe it was good. But how many want it gooder, amen? If it was good, how many want it gooder? I'm like, Shandara Mayanda, yes, I'll take it. Come on. But I'm not going to allow the enemy to keep me down, amen, down and bound, amen. I'm like, man, I serve a mighty king, amen. Forty, everything that has taken place in this earth already belongs to Jesus, amen. Not even death can keep him down. Not even death. And I belong to that vast army. Amen. And you should too. I don't know. That's like hallelujah. Amen. But again. Tell your neighbor. 2022. We got to get let it go. Maybe there's unforgiveness. Having forgiven certain things. But we got want God to forgive us. You got to forgive. You got to forget. The Lord always says the vengeance is mine. Allow him to take care of it. Amen. Amen. Believe me for his son and daughters. He'll take care of you. You know we might have went through it. But he'll take care of you. Amen. Well let's move on. You see when we understand. We might have made wrong choices. Maybe wrong decisions and maybe like I said the failures of of things of not being where we want to be but also we have to understand that in order for us to keep moving forward we have to accept our own responsibilities tell your neighbor we have our own responsibilities some of us might not even come to church maybe once a month hallelujah but at least you make it we want to stay committed tell your neighbor we want to be committed to win it amen I would hate for the Lord to come. And I'm only coming a certain day and he's, he comes on the other day. And then what, what are we going to say? Well, uh, why didn't you come for me? Son and daughter. What I say, let me be first in your life. So I can bless you and your family and your loved ones. But sometimes we, under, we try to wonder why are we still stuck in our failures. Tell your neighbor, we need to stop blaming others. What we blame in our circumstance for our condition that we're in. Pastor don't know what I'm going through. I, I don't. No, I don't. For some of you, I don't. But God does. And if God says I can get you out of your condition, then hallelujah, praise God. That's good news for me, amen. Because he will get you out. But tell your neighbor, we like to blame each other. Blame the pastor. The pastor made me do it. He said, quit my job. No, I didn't. He said, quit my job. No, I just tell you what I had to do, amen. I had to take a leap of faith, believe me. And I wouldn't tell everybody to just do it if you're not ready for what's coming because there's a lot of work that comes behind it. In order for you to just say, okay, I'm done just to do the full-time ministry and trust God. Ah, yeah, 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 amen. You better be ready. And what, what's going to come with it is you got to be committed, amen? 
believe me, you could ask my wife, I'm a, oh Lord, like, babe, what do you think? What's going to happen? She says, you did it. Trust God. Okay, let's do it. And that boom, it discouraged me more. Gave me more courage to press on and not give up. Like Paul says, I press on towards a goal to reach the prize that God has called me. But I still got to keep pressing. Tell your neighbor, you got to press too. Who want to be blessed again? And again. And again. And again. Hallelujah. Accept it. Amen. I pray blessings upon that a hundredfold. Tell your neighbor, we got to start blaming each other. And especially pastor, okay? Because he looks like an angel up there. Tell your neighbor, we are quick to point the finger. She did it, amen, or he did it. I'm telling this to my wife, so maybe she gets saved today, amen. I'm just playing, babe. Proverbs 28, 13 says, whoever conceals his transgression will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. We can't get unstuck until we take our responsibilities. I'm going to give you guys four reasons in our responsibility for our duty and why we fail. Just four ones, okay? We fail. Hey, if someone's saying fail. Who is pastor calling fail? Amen. I don't know, but that wasn't my nickname. Amen. But we fail when we think we are there. How many of us sometimes believe I'm already there? Or maybe I don't need to go there. I mean, I have church in my house. My Bible says that we need to come into fellowship. If you think that your home is, is your fellowship, I mean, you know, God says, no, you got to get out. Amen. You got a fellowship. The church is the people. And I don't know about you. You know, I need to be encouraged. You know, sometimes we're going through things in life. And, you know, if we understand that if we're just facing towards us, we're not going to see it. Again, who wants a fresh start this year? It's a time to start it off and kick that football, amen, and say touchdown, amen, in the first kick. But when we think we already arrived, tell your neighbor, well, I already got there. We start believing that we did it by ourselves. believing that we did it all by ourselves and what happens is we start getting prideful we forget who got us there we lose sight of Jesus Christ when we think we're there 18 says prize goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall Tell your neighbor, I can't be haughty. Maybe just for the Lord, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Therefore, let anyone who thinks he stands, who feels sure that he has a steadfast mind and is standing firm, take heed lest he fall into sin. You see, we have to have the mindset on Paul's teaching, the way Paul teaches us. Again, Philippians 3, 12 and 14. Not that I have already obtained all this. You see, Paul still hadn't got there and he was doing all the work of the ministry. But he says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal. Tell your neighbor, he had a goal. But I pressed on to take hold that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. How many believe you got saved today? If you believe it in your heart, then that's when Jesus took hold of you. That means that he purchased you by the blood. That means that you don't belong to you no more. You belong to our mighty king. Amen. And thank God that he bought me. But this is what Paul's saying. You got to keep pressing. 
there's going to be opposition that's going to come your way. But I'm going to tell you that opposition shouldn't keep us where we're at. Opposition is going to get our faith to start growing stronger and stronger. In God. How many want that blessing? Amen. Because my Bible says that the more we go through things, the bigger the blessing's going to be. But if I have to stick myself and keep doing what I have to be doing for God, I'm not going to give in to the right or to the left. What's going on? I'm not going to get distracted. I'm going to keep focused on Jesus Christ for what he took hold of me. That's the way our minds should be. But how many of us know that we lose sight of Jesus Christ? But pride comes before destruction. Amen. So number one. Or we fail when we're afraid to take risk. Anybody here don't ever want to take risk. Amen. When we're afraid to take risk. Should I, could have, would have, it might have what he's doing. I'll just stick over here. I'll let him fail. Amen. Remember when Peter and the disciples were on the boat. They seen, what is that, a ghost? And it was Jesus walking on water. And Peter, they're all scared, all the disciples. But Peter said, is that you, Lord? Call me out. I want to walk on water with you. And God said, it's me, Peter. Get out the boat. And Peter started walking on water. While the other disciples are in the boat. I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm in the boat. Amen. But Peter was sharp for a minute, a little minute. How many of us know we need more sharpening, amen? But he was walking on water, amen? But then the boat, the waves, the tribulations, the troubles, husbands, wives, oh my God, kids, the dog now, amen? And we start sinking. We start sinking. But at least you came out. In order for you to grow in your faith, you're going to have to take challenges and risks. Oh, come on. If you can give it up for Jesus, amen. Remember, I'm in the winning team. Why? How could I go wrong taking a risk for the Lord? How could I go wrong for me to root myself in the church that I need to be? Amen. Because I know that God has called me. I know his spirit is in the house. I want to be a part of that inheritance. I don't want to let go because I got my family that are still out there in the world. But I trust God. Because why? I'm going to, I'm, man, I'm down to come all the way down. You know how you were when you were in the world? Right? When there was a fight going to kick off or something, you were all down. Ain't nobody can tell you nothing. And I'm talking about the women right now, amen? You know, yeah, where, pastor, who are we going to go brawl with? And I'll just come down on our knees, okay? We're just going to have a prayer war, amen? Oh, I thought we were going to get into battle. How about the men? They're afraid to take risks. Oh, I can't do that, pastor. I'm uh, serving the Lord now. Get out of that. In other words, if you're afraid to take risks, you'd rather stay where you're comfortable at. Right under the blankets. Oh, what, they're going to evangelize? Hey, let's not go to church that week. Oh, they're going to do, they're going to go to the conference. Oh, you know, they're just going to ask for money. We get in our comfort zone. But we want the new stuff that God has for us. Tell your neighbor, it's time to let go. Amen. I'm going to do it. I'm going to trust it. Amen. Why? Because the days are evil. It's a time that we need to start getting our family, our loved ones, amen, to understand that God is waiting for us. 2023, the word that's going to be this year. Are you ready? 
But are you ready? Tell your neighbor, are you ready? What is our conference theme this year going to be? Are you ready for what? For Jesus coming back. Can you truly say, are you ready? Some of us are going to be like, am I ready? I sure hope so. Get rooted, suited, and booted, amen. Get coming to the part where you have to be. That's all that it's going to take. And I'm going to say, yes, I'm ready, amen, Lord, when you come. But I'm going to continue to start bringing all the people that I need to bring to you so you can use me. Amen. Man, I'm only going to do these two. I'll save one for Sunday. And I feel bad for the ones that are watching because they're going to have to figure out that we're on Mondo and Nana. But anyways, I'll just put something out there. You see, we would rather stay in our comfort zone. Anybody here ever like to stay in our comfort zone? All right. Hallelujah. We got some honest people. Or we will live life as we see it in a worldly manner. Well, I'm just going to do what I have to do, you know, and do do my do do's. Amen. And I just do what I do. Amen. But I'm there doing what I have to do at church with the do's. Amen. But that's all I do. Worldly value. Amen. Instead of saying, come on, pastor, let's do this. Get this worldliness out. We need the spiritual, amen. I want to be spiritually blessed, amen. I want my words to impact, you know, whoever I'm preaching to. I want it for my kids. I want the words to keep going further, amen, because they're your words, Lord. But then again, we try to fit in with people so you could be liked. I'm going to tell you like this, church. I'm just going to end it with this, okay? If you just want to be liked by people, especially in the world, I wouldn't waste my time. I preach them the truth, amen. That's why a lot of the times, oh, here he comes again. Well, I'm supposed to be the light for them, amen. How am I going to be and deal with them in darkness, amen, and live like, okay, that's okay. You know, it's not. Especially when they ask me. They, they don't want to ask me. That's why nobody ever wants to ask me anything. I'm going to tell them the truth. Why? Because the truth will set you free. Amen. If you're trying to live a life in the world. Amen. Being in one foot in and one foot out and doing the hokey pokey. It's not going to work. You got to be truthful. Amen. And tell them, hey, you know what? There's either one way you're going, either up or down. Which one are you going to go? I'm hitting the up elevator and I'm going up. And there's only one way. Tell your neighbor again, the days are evil. We live in some evil times right now, church. It's time that we need to wake up. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting awake, amen. I want that coffee pastor hat, amen. It's just Folgers from 7-Eleven, hallelujah. And we got 7-Eleven cups right there. First John 2, 15, 17. Do not love the world. I'm going to end it with this. If we can all stand. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes... And the pride of lives comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever.